call in earlier just sharing with me why did the media, why did pollsters miss this break for Biden? Because those exit polls show people broke hard for Biden. Yep. And w- what is your take on why, before I share with you what some people said? Well, I mean, look, there's many things. I do think the endorsements in this case mattered. I think it, it helped in Minnesota to have Klobuchar, who has a lot of clout, say, I'm with him. Uh, I think part of this is just this is where the the, the bias of the electorate is to safe right now yes, i mean yes democrats are terrified of another trump presidency and so when it's safe versus risk i think at the last minute people tend to go safe i think south carolina helped there's nothing like winning in politics to win more it just is how it works whether fair or not but you look like a winner i mean for months, people said Biden's most electable. Many people didn't believe it. But when he wins elections, I think it helped. Uh, and finally, look, give him credit. I mean, his campaign has a coalition of African-American voters, older voters, some younger voters, actually, suburban women voters. That 2018 coalition, at least in the last week, came out for him. It's, you know, in the Washington Post exit poll, said voters who decided in the last few days, 47% went to Biden, only 17% for Sanders. Yeah, That's off the charts. I mean, this is, it has a lot to do with a sense of safety and who is going to be the safest pick, who can win. But I also wonder some of the, you know, Bernie's comment on Fidel Castro may have been a bigger issue than people mm-hmm. think about. Not for him saying something nice about Fidel. I don't think anyone cared. In the big picture on the left, you don't really care. But it almost felt like an unforced error. And it seemed like, wow, this is going to dog him forever. Because if he's going to have these conversations where someone asks about Fidel Castro, and instead of going like, look, the guy's a dictator and autocrat, uh, he's going to volunteer something nice about him. Well, like, this is going to be a hard campaign if that's what it's going to be. That, that's exactly right, especially when he doubled down on it uh, the second time. I can't even remember if it was a town hall or a debate, but he stuck with the comment and he didn't do that. And again, you might know his politics and say, I understand where he's coming from, but Democrats don't want to risk that right now. And that's a kind of taste of what some imagine. Look, he still has a lot of delegates. He still could be victorious, but I think that was a... A really big mistake on his part. Bloomberg spent, it looks like, maybe $400 million. Yeah. And amounting to maybe $200 per vote. I, mean, oh I saw gosh. one thing, yeah. 100 another one saying $200 per vote. He could have just handed out money to people. Would have been of more doing effective. Ads then. So, he, were you surprised he dropped out today this quickly? A little bit, although I was thinking last night a a person like that hates, A, to lose money, uh, to invest a lot and not get any returns. That's what last night was. It wasn't like there was a little bit there. He got devastated, and it's embarrassing. Uh, He's a very successful person in his area of the world, uh, and that was humiliating to spend so much and get nothing. Uh, So I wasn't totally surprised that in the next few days you'd see him drop out. The so Liz Warren right now is sort of yeah. maybe in a holding pattern. She might be out campaigning tonight. I, I'm not sure, but the way the media is reporting is that she's reassessing. That's yep. the term we heard. What do you expect? Well, I mean, the only reason she stays in at this point is somehow for principle to keep running, say it doesn't affect the overall race somehow, Mm -hmm. or this uh, imagined or predicted, whatever your position, brokered convention, where somehow uh, it's a mess between the two men, the two older men, uh, and, and they throw it to a different candidate and she's the last one standing and she can present herself as a coalitional candidate. Uh, that's really hard to imagine. I mean, uh, it, it's hard to imagine that scenario unfolding. So there'll be pressure on her to get out. She's going to have trouble right. raising money. And some will say consolidate with one of the two if you're not going to win. Ideologically, clearly, she's much closer to, to Bernie Sanders. Yep. But I wonder if that rift they had has caused a sense where she would not support him. And I just don't know. The, we don't know the answer. But to your other point, though, in a way, this race began with the most diverse. It was a beautiful mosaic of people we had on the first debate stage. And it's coming down now. And it's not in a pejorative way, but just two older white guys. That's what it's coming down to. And you're like, and so much of that, in my view, has to be the fear of who can beat Donald Trump and that that electability just baking into saying, okay, no minorities and no women. And the white guys, that's it. That's what we got to do now. I I have a sense that's part of this. Yeah, I mean, that's also a bias against, meaning that is a bias that 
that a female candidate can't be a safe electable person, even compared to a socialist Democrat. Uh, I mean, that's how deep that bias runs. And same uh, with even an African-American a candidate post Obama, that some of that might still be there. I mean, Sanders still is, he's an old white guy, but he's not exactly a mainstream candidate. He's no, a socialist, right? he's a Jewish American. So there's ways in which he still shows some diversity. The the, the good news for Democrats is, is on Super Tuesday, they have a diverse coalition. We keep hearing about this, Latinos, right. African-Americans, Muslim Americans. That's what's coming together between all these candidates. And that's something to keep your eye on because, you know, if a candidate can put that all together and be that coalitional candidate, boy, that's a powerful electoral coalition there that Trump should be scared of. And frankly, the whole GOP for years to come. Earlier in the show, I had T.J. Ducklow on as the national press secretary for Joe Biden's yep. campaign. And I said to him, I know this is out of the box, but we need party unity to beat Donald Trump. Yep. I said, what if instead of doing the normal perfunctory rally at when it's over where the other candidate comes on stage why not do one now with bernie sanders mm -hmm. where you do a rally together and go look we have difference on policy we're going to, but we are both democrats even a short one and he kind of changed the subject really quickly yeah and and i guess the fear would be from his point of view if you had a rally it might be ten thousand bernie supporters and right. you know a thousand biden people or whatever and there could be booing yes the op it could be a nightmare yeah. and in politics you don't do that kind of uncertain thing because it might not turn out well right and then look both campaigns right now are in war mode against each other that is the nature of of the competition nothing to do about that but i don't think they want to give neither side wants to give either absolutely anything right now and both realize that they still have a long way to go to get a majority of the delegates so i don't think either side is feeling like we've won no that I'm so saying, they don't want to, that's yeah. what i like, do it now yeah before, because it no, almost, i know it's a almost pre carter like a, kennedy right. moment it's like a it's almost like a reset now of everything a yeah. lot's happened but they are almost tied we still don't have all the delegates a, a portion from from even utah and california of yeah. course and texas and when it's all over, estimates are that Biden could be leading by 30 to 50 delegates. So it's really close. And 60 percent of the delegates have not even been voted yet. So right. we've got a lot to go. Yeah. So, and I found it very curious that, that Bernie Sanders just a week ago tweeting that the establishment Democrats and establishment Republicans doesn't care, essentially both trying to stop him. I'm yeah. paraphrasing the tweet. And then today he releases this ad. And I've got to play this ad. Nina, you there? Here's Bernie's ad with him and, and Barack Obama. Uh -huh. and, and it's really Barack Obama's audio. And I think it was from the 2016 convention, a lot of this. And there's all images of Bernie and Obama together. And I found it very curious that this was the approach. Here's clip number four. It's, it's a great ad, but I don't know the timing now. Clip four. Bernie is somebody who has the virtue of saying exactly what he believes great authenticity, great passion, and is fearless. Bernie served on the Veterans Committee and got bills done. I think people are ready for a call to action. They want honest leadership who cares about them. They want somebody who's going to fight for them. And they will find it in Bernie. That's where I feel the burn. It's a great, I mean, why not run that before? Yeah. But also it's almost inconsistent with anti-establishment when you're having the, the former president, who's certainly part, I don't, when I say establishment, by the way, people sometimes are like, why? Bernie's made it a pejorative term. I don't mean it inherently yeah, yeah. negative. I mean, just leaders. the normal, yeah, traditional party democratic leaders. leaders. Yeah. And I don't mean rank and file at all. We're talking about the leadership of our party is the establishment wing of our party. That's the way it's always been term, but Bernie's made it more like you're inherently negative. I don't mean it that way. So maybe I should use the term traditional Democrat yeah. party leadership. Well, I mean, I think, look, the ad, I mean, the Super Tuesday scared, I I think it unra uh, un, uh, it rattled uh, the Sanders camp. I don't think from what I'm hearing that they really saw all of that coming. I think he's frustrated that he can't get higher levels of turnout. He has promised that. Biden delivered that yesterday. I know. That's... He hasn't been able to change the African-American vote the way he hoped. Uh, and Biden did very well. And I think... Part of that is the shadow of Obama and the Obama administration looms much larger than Sanders thought. And he's trying to latch on to that. And he's he's also finally with that ad trying to show that being bold and having a vision isn't antithetical to uh, the Obama legacy either. Uh, it's kind of part of 
Obama that we forget. I thought this ad, folks, if you see the ad, yeah. it's fabulous. Like you're like, it's like right. moving. But it's too late. I'm like, why didn't you release it? Yeah. Because they were running, their plan was to run against the system. Yeah. And now they're trying to say, hey, we're not that scary. We're actually, Obama liked us. Yeah. And you're like, hmm. Uh, and Well, the establishment includes Obama too. I, I think obviously that's like, it does. but I'm saying it's kind of a mistake in some of the Sanders thinking. That's the what, establishment um, isn't simply Republicans. It's not simply K Street and lobbyists. It's also now a, a two-term Democratic president who many Democrats still have strong feelings about. And I think Biden's been able to capitalize on that now, uh, at least in the last few weeks, and undercut some of Sanders' uh momentum that way if this was an open seat election i wonder who are the, be closer to getting nominated maybe one of the younger people on the yeah. stage maybe bernie you know maybe I, I can't tell you the answer but if you take out if the number one goal isn't just elect who can defeat the incumbent if you don't have an incumbent mm -hmm. that's gone so so who can win and you can look at whatever scenario but if you don't know the republican's going to be a monster like trump yep. he could be a normal could be mitt romney People wouldn't be scared. They'd disagree with, like, well, they're probably going to nominate Romney. Let's go with our dream. Let's throw the Hail Mary finally and try to get, if it's health care for all, or Julian Castro or, or Kamala Harris or yeah. Cory Booker, whoever it might have been that dropped out a long time ago. Let me ask you, and I'm, I'm, I said this earlier with Linda, I'm asking you in an objective way. I'm not rooting for this. I like Joe Biden a great deal. Joe Biden, last two debates, very good. His town hall at CNN, there's a viral moment where he's got tears. Fabulous. Yeah. Next debate, March 15th. What yeah. if he goes back to the old Joe Biden that we saw at other? And and I'm hoping this doesn't happen, but the glare of the spotlight, just say, just assume it's just him and Bernie on stage for two hours. Yeah. W what does the traditional Democratic and leadership it, it, do at that point? That, well, it's, it's just also, pure panic. It's the first time he'll be tested like that, meaning all the other debates now have been so divided up when he's had those moments you might not catch it or it's diminished because you have to share the time with six other people. Now you're just talking about a handful. So it will be a long, At the most, it's going to be three people. At the most, it'll be struggling. three people if Liz yeah. Warren stays in. If not, and Bernie did that with Hillary Clinton. So he's used to those debates that are, you know, you got to stay focused for two hours. Your mind can't wander. Yeah. And every answer is going to be dissected afterwards. You know, I wonder if they they pull him out of the debate or they just they just <laughs> in the middle of the debate pull him out that we've never seen before. I don't mean that. I right. mean like say like like you in can't a boxing match, put him to this. Yeah, I, I don't think so. And I understand. Look, that is the risk. The their Biden risk is he's pretty safe in terms of uh, who he is and and what he's about. He's pretty safe in terms of people know generally what Biden is. The big risk is exactly that. And we've seen it even when he was younger, these catastrophic campaign moments where he says exactly the wrong thing, or now in older age where he literally can't keep up. And that is the risk that Democrats take with Biden. It's not totally a safe bet. No, the campaigning exactly itself it. is what the risk is. Right. And I think we will see a little bit of that now. It will still be hard to undo the last week for Sanders. Um, but but Democrats are going to be thinking hard about that and imagining Trump on the other side of the stage at that moment, pouncing like a tiger. I, I don't know, though. Something happened with Joe Biden. And perhaps it, perhaps he was he's a human being. Maybe he was moping a little bit. Things weren't mm -hmm. going as well. I, I don't know the answer. But I can tell you. Even in South Carolina that night when he gave a speech, yep. that was fun, phenomenal. Great I'm like, speech. Where, where's this guy been? Yeah. And the moment the CNN town hall, and then last night, and people are like, well, he's using a teleprompter. He's still delivering. Sure. It, the words could be up there. It's how you deliver them that means something. It was very, I thought he was great. In fact, let's play a short clip. You know, just a little bit of, we'll play clip number two. This is Biden, the closing part of his speech last night. It's like a 40 second clip. Look. Our campaign reflects the diversity of this party and this nation. And that's how it should be. Because we need to bring everybody along. Everybody. We want a nominee who will beat Donald Trump. But also, also keep Nancy Pelosi the Speaker of the House. Win back the United States Senate. If that's what you want, join us. And if you want a nominee who's a Democrat, a lifelong Democrat, a proud Democrat, an Obama Biden Democrat. Join us. That, that's Good great line, stuff. Right? I mean, like, like you're yeah. like killing it. So if that's just the Biden from now to November 3rd, 
uh, fine. It's because yeah. I want to win too. It's not. I'm like right. every other Democrat out here. I yes, I'm ideologically very progressive. There's no doubt about. It, but I want to win. I want us to win. And so if Biden's that candidate, I'm going to work 150. percent I like Joe Biden a great deal. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, he's more moderate than I am, and he represents the status quo more than I think we should be doing in this country. But that doesn't matter. Getting Trump out is important. But that concern is if. So let's not hope he folds because there's no real answer. Because right. if Bernie, look at a week from now, we're going to have March 10th, six contests, including Michigan to 125 delegates, Washington State, 89 delegates, Missouri, the three biggest delegates. This is kind of important. Linda's story is very honest. She said if Bernie loses Michigan and Washington State, which he won last time, if he loses them, the next week is even worse. It's Florida, Illinois, yeah, Ohio. It, she said it's actually going to be on life support. Yeah. She's a surrogate for the campaign. I mean, we're That's friends, so she's just talking. Right, right. But it's on the radio. You can hear it. And she's being brutally honest that yeah. if Bernie loses Michigan and Washington State, you know, that's where is the math to all of this? And then Democrats are in a position where, well, let's say Senator Warren is still in the race. But this is their bet. And that's when it will get frightening in a different way that it hasn't been. Because there's been a bit of a cushion. You have all these candidates and Biden's theoretically going to be most electable. And so now once he has this, say it's locked up, I think it'll be a gut check as you watch those speeches, you watch those debates. It could be he can perform. I mean, in politics, there are just these moments people live up to. Sure. And it happens. And there's a speech or a victory that just transforms you into this new person. But that other Biden could still be there. So, I mean, so my fellow Democrats, if Bi- and I... I'm whoever the nominee is, I'm very happy with and I think we're going to win. But if it's Biden, I think honestly prepare to hold your breath for about seven and a half months yeah. and just be like, please just keep. Do-. And I'm going to root. I've always rooted for Biden. I, every yeah. time he's in debate, I want him to do better. It was yeah. never like, well, you know, and, and Trump, his viciousness, this, he should be in a nursing home. I don't think that once it gets more amplified, that that attack line, I don't think that's going to play well for Trump. I don't think he cares. Yeah. But his base might like it. But there are people who've got family members in nursing homes, who have older people in their lives yeah. who it's that's another level of cruelty, it's just typical Trump cruelty. It will be, but Biden will have to perform in that context. So the next few months will be about can he last two hours in a normal debate or can he avoid saying something ridiculously gaffy to a reporter or uh, does he make some off color comment at a speech? Come fall, you're talking about a whole other kind of challenge. You're talking about a president coming at him uh, with fire and fury, investigation, slander, smear, attacking his family, Mm -hmm. you know, his remaining family, like trying to. And and so he will have to perform under that, uh, even if it doesn't play well. And that's a big question about Biden from day one. And I don't know the answer. I haven't seen that he can withstand that and perform under that kind of heat. It's. I'm trying not to think about it because we have to win. That's all I know. So let's let's hope that the Joe Biden we're seeing now, if he turns out to be nominee, is yeah. this Biden. You know, I think it's between Bernie and and Biden. But if this stays, and here's a concern I have, and this is truly a hardball politics concern. If this goes neck and neck and we get to the convention, Joe Biden will be the nominee because yeah. second ballot, superdelegates get the vote and that's he's yeah. gone. Then you're, we are going to lose some Bernie people. So yes. Bernie supporters, they're just not going to join. They're going to feel they've really been robbed this time. So I don't know how you address that. I'm rooting for one or the other to win, start winning. Just, I mean, just win big the next few weeks, to be honest. That'd I'm be not, much better for the party. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm better. really being yes. pragmatic. I'm like, yeah. if it's Bernie or if it's Biden, just win a bunch in a row. So you have a huge lead. Even if you don't get to 1991, the number of delegates needed to be the presumptive nominee. Just win so big where the lead is so big, no one can take it away from you. And they go, that person has to be the nominee. Right. Look, if that doesn't happen, then there'll have to be a heroic moment from the loser, whoever it is, to really not just make one speech or go on stage and wave their hand together, but to campaign actively, proactively, and make sure you don't lose that many supporters. It will be incumbent on Sanders or maybe Biden to do that. Because that's a big problem. This is bitter. I mean... You, you can read the Twitter feeds if you want to see the I, atmosphere or go into the hustings. And since you're an historian, yeah. a political historian, uh, when parties go to these conventions that are not clear and there's fights going on, not even brokered, but like yeah. fights and you have ballots, 
it tends not to do well in modern day. It can hurt. Uh, in 1976, uh, Ronald Reagan challenged Ford, and the feelings were pretty divisive and bitter, and Ford ultimately won with Paul Manafort's help. <laughs> True. Uh, and, and ultimately, though, it, it did weaken the Republican ticket. Fast forward four years later, Ted Kennedy and Jimmy Carter. Kennedy attacked Carter, never really had a unity moment, famously wouldn't hold his hand up in a co-equal victory sign mm -hmm. at the convention. And many historians agree it hurt Carter, it undercut enthusiasm. And so that is a real risk. You can overcome it. It happened in 2008. Democrats did rally around Obama, but it, it's a ch it's an added challenge. And this is the one year I think a lot of Democrats don't want an added challenge uh, with with the uh, uh, Trump fire coming at them. So let's take a quick break. We'll, we'll come back. We're going to take some some calls as well. We'll take sure. Some, we're going to keep them short. But Julian Zellers is here. You see him all the time on CNN. Political expert. He's Princeton professor. So we'll come back, 866-997-4748. We'll talk about this. Then we'll, we'll talk about the coronavirus a little bit and about what's going on, yeah. the, the political fallout of that, because everything has a political up and downside when you're sure. dealing with a tragedy that's facing a nation. So let's, we'll come right back after this. Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM Progress 127. This is the Dino Bidala Show, exclusively on Sirius XM's Progress. Welcome back, Dino Bidala Show. We're here with Julian Zelizer. Julian, is there, we're talking about, hey, there's Bill de Blasio. He's on MSNBC right now. Uh -huh. So we were just talking yep. in the break about, has there, Ronald Reagan's re-election? Yeah. Did, were there any issues with him then? Any challenges then? It was later oh, yeah, the, No, no, it was in 84. Uh, there were already some questions about... It wasn't posed as memory, which he actually did have dementia, but is he too old and was he slow? And there was one debate. I think it was the first debate the where uh, he he had, well, there was two things. One is he did have trouble and he was really slow, a little Biden-like. And then the other was when he was asked about age and he said he wouldn't use Mondale's youth and inexperience against him. Right. And then he just turned the corner. Right. Um, but but. It was an issue with him. And by just to be clear, I'm not suggesting at all that Joe Biden has dementia. We were just yeah. talking about has there been the age of That's a candidate used up. against the person? And it, Ronald Reagan. And it the, also came up with in '96 uh, in a different way. Bob Dole, Bob Dole challenged yeah. Clinton, and mm -hmm. Clinton said, "I can't remember the line, but essentially Dole is a bridge to the past, and yeah. he's a bridge to the future, which is about age. It's about uh, who you are, and as a, a different, not stamina." so much as what your memories are and what your aspirations are. 
and, and Clinton was great at using metaphors, and the bridge one was one that he was yeah. famous for using. And it's a, it was very effective. So, all right, let's take call. We're going to keep the call short. A couple of minutes. Usually we go longer, but we got Julian here, and we'll chat couple quickly. Here is uh, Rodney from Oklahoma. Hey, Rodney, how are you? All right, Dean. How you doing? Pretty good. You had uh, the turnout was lower in Oklahoma. You were the only Super Tuesday state that had lower turnout. Any idea why? Um. Well, look, here's the thing about Oklahoma. Democrats are only like 36%. Now, they rely on the independents because in Oklahoma, an independent can vote in the Democratic primary. Um, And so that's mainly where they rely on to win um, different uh, uh, elections. But uh, I think that... uh, Bernie won the election here last time around. He did, and he lost this time. Yeah, yeah, and um, obviously Biden won it by, uh, you know, by a large margin uh, yesterday. But what I found was more interesting was now the Republicans didn't have a lot to bring them to the polls, um, but we did have a couple of... uh, the local tax issues and and can a liquor store stay open on Sunday? That type of thing. <laughs> That's um, pressing. But, That's a... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but only in Oklahoma, right? <laughs> but um, the Democrats equaled the Republican turnout. So um, in the larger cities, things are changing somewhat. Now we have the census, and who knows what the hell's gonna? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're gonna. The Republicans are going to gerrymander that all to hell. Um, so, uh, but but we'll see. Um, but the biggest thing is the fifth congressional district for us, and and that's one of the things when I voted for Biden yesterday was thinking about the down ballot races. Um, our, our the fifth congressional district with Kendra Horn is the number one targeted race in because you flipped that district, right? That's a Democrat has that district. By 3,200 votes. Wow, I remember that. Rodney calls yeah. a lot. He's more of a centrist yeah. Democrat in, in Oklahoma. Yeah, it's right. Now, any last now, thing, Rodney? Because I want to go. Let's go ahead, my friend. Yep, yep. Well, my question is, and we're talking about unity. Um, if um, if Biden runs away with it in the next few elections, mm-hmm. um, will Bernie drop out? I don't think he will. Let me text I think him, he'll and I'll ask him. He might. And, and I, huh? He might. Well, I, I think that is that's setting up for another Bernie bro, um, you know, set out or whatever. We're gonna All right. So let me, Ronnie, time. let me put this yeah. to, to Julian. So what, Julian, I that's think, only a concern. I mean, the, the first point was also good um, in that I think the down ballot issues, even though they're not the kind of thing most Americans pay attention to, I think it's resonated a bit that there might be a cost to going bolder with Sanders Mm -hmm. to uh, the congressional races. And it's true that in 2018, the Democrats swung a lot of districts. Those are always going to be vulnerable. And and so I think uh, some voters were going to be thinking about that uh, when they decide Biden versus uh, Sanders. And you notice in Colorado, Steve Bullock has now said he's going to run. Uh, for this Montana, I mean, sorry, in Montana. No, yeah, John Hickenlooper, and, and that's big because they were trying to get him to do it like Hickenlooper. Right. And you know, I wonder if some of that is well, it looks like Biden will be at the top of the ticket. Who knows? It's and the set, you know, I think the second one is the big question. Many people have on the Clinton side uh, bitter feelings about 2016 uh, with the idea that Bernie bros didn't come back. Now, I don't think they represent the entirety of the Sanders campaign. I mean, his coalition's also interesting, and it's Latino voters, and it's younger voters. Mm -hmm. And I bet you it's many traditional Democratic voters who like his ideas. And if you turn the Twitter off and, you know, maybe stay outside the front (laughs) rows of the rallies, it would just look like a a more liberal rally than, than you'd find. And so I think... There is a way that Sanders, even if he goes to the end, which I agree, I don't think he's going to back out. This is a matter of principle. Mm -hmm. He can bring a lot of those voters. They are naturally Democrats. They are not, by and large, socialist 
democratic socialists were outside the fold. Right. Um, so you can lose some Bernie bros if we're using that as the term, but I still think most of them right. would come in. All right, Ron, thank you, my friend Ronnie. I, I appreciate. You. A nice chatting with you. Good question. Always. And, and it's interesting to talk to Ronnie calls and we have other people who are more yeah. centrist Democrats as well, especially from a red state like Oklahoma, yeah. where the down ballot argument we heard so much in the last week. And I was wondering if that was going to filter through or not. And in Biden's a little clip I played, he emphasized that became part of his stump speech and keep Nancy Pelosi as speaker. Yeah. And there was a time before 2018, if you would have said Make Nancy Pelosi speaker. Some applause here or there. Yeah. But after the job she's done, she's become so much more popular among Democrats well, I think, now. I think the impeachment process mattered. I, I mean, yeah. those are rare moments when the public sees what Congress is and what it's doing. It was like during Watergate, people thought very well of Congress. Oh, for interesting. A while. <laughs> and I think there's some of that now, uh, whether it's Congressman Schiff uh, or Nancy Pelosi, there's good feeling. And at the flip side, there's a lot of understanding, I think, in the Democratic electorate of the power of Mitch McConnell mm -hmm. and the Republicans in the Senate. They were on display, too. And so Congress matters post-impeachment in a way it might not have a couple of years ago. Well, well, clearly, we all know as Democrats, if there was not the House controlled by Nancy Pelosi right. and the Democrats, Trump would just be doing everything. I mean, I, I don't even know. There's no limit to what he would do because in the first two years, there was a sense Paul Ryan... Would not stand up a lot, but he was standing up a little bit. He was sort of pushing back. Now, Kevin McCarthy, if he's speaker yeah. in a new house, Republicans get in trouble. It's whatever Trump wants to do. Any whim, anything. Rename buildings to name it after everything Trump and the, the White House to ridiculous policy ideas. There's no, nothing to slow him down. There's no speed bumps whatsoever. So losing the house now yeah. is, all of a sudden Democrats care about things we didn't. Supreme Court. We care much, much more. Right. We care about federal courts in ways we did not care in 2016 because I was making the argument and it wasn't resonating with people as a Hillary surrogate, as I could tell. We had an open seat. We would have control of the Supreme Court right now, 5-4 Republican right now. Yeah. And right, let's take another quick call okay. here and we'll keep this short. Here's Norm. Hey, Norm, how are you? I'm Dean. I want to ask an off question and a regular question there is. Good. Yes, I want to ask your guest. Who, who does he think should replace Chris Matthews on in the, in the, in the, He's a CNN contributor. Do you have any view on who should not, be on? <laughs> I, I have. They, they have a lot of talent at the station, and there's right. a lot of talent out there. And right. I don't know. I mean, the thing Matthews brought with him, uh, uh, to his credit, was a deep knowledge of politics. Right. And he did it in a TV way, you know, making his jokes and stuff. But he actually had been in sure, Congress, and, and he really understood it. And, and I think it would benefit who whoever they pick to bring a little bit of that. Cause a lot of people on air TV radio don't really know as much as they should on how Washington works and how politics works. And I think that's a value added. That would help Nicole Wallace. There's a yeah. name. I like joy Reed. She's my buddy, She's but, fantastic. but if she, and I go on her show on the weekend, but if she gets hardball seven to eight, I'll never be on. Cause I'm here. So I'm really happy to be here. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying like, I hope she gets it. Even if that means I don't go on her show on the weekend anymore and but nobody knows they're trying like joy hosted today krenak is going to host they're going to put yeah, all their hosts through the yeah. thing and there's rumors nicole wallace yeah. maybe she would get it or expand her show four to six yeah so i don't know no, nobody knows um but all right norm what's your other question my friend oh it's just that uh you know i forgot my other question what so let me just get off you said line. here what if war <laughs> warren drops out what's the incentive for staying in you had some questions oh, yeah, yeah, yeah what yeah what it was intended she's staying in there i mean it, yeah. It, it, what happens if Warren 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 uh, uh, doesn't drop? I mean, what, what? Give me something on her, okay? You, by the way, yeah, there, no, there was sure breaking does. news I mean, on Washington Post over my shoulder here. She didn't yeah. drop out, but the breaking news is that that Washington Post is reporting right now that Warren and Sanders allies are in talks trying to get Warren to support okay. Sanders. Now, it's just a Washington Post article. It right. could turn into nothing tomorrow. They could both deny it tomorrow. We have no idea. Just telling you that. So okay. so what do you, do you, what's the benefit of her just staying in for a while? Well, I mean, the, the biggest benefit theoretically is what we said earlier. Somehow this all gets brokered, contested, and she's the last person standing. Uh, second is she doesn't have to choose sides if she stays in right now, uh, meaning she can play a different kind of role. She keeps running and she keeps doing what the first caller was asking about now before those two will have a moment of unity. She tries to find 
the commonality with voters. She makes the speeches. She serves that position in debates that you guys are fighting, but this is where we are on the same page. And finally, her. She is a really interesting figure in American politics. She's attracted many new voters and female voters. And she has a set of issues which neither candidate deals with as substantively as her middle class debt, uh, middle class economic insecurity. And by staying in, that's a platform to talk about it. Right. And if she has the money, it's not clear it hurts the other two candidates that much anymore. And so that's why you would do it. Uh, again, right. that's All not right. saying I agree with it, Thanks. but that's the reason. Thank you, my friend, Norm. Always nice chat with you. You know, it's interesting. She's about, the projection is she'll probably end up with 100 delegates, close to 100 from Super Tuesday, depending on the allocation. If she stays in, there's only three people. She gets If she gets the 15% in some of the states, she yep. can get more delegates. She'd be on the stage with just three, two other people on March 15th. Yep. And it would be an amazing platform Huge. for her. You know, you wonder if something, if someone falters, does she become the candidate now? Because she has slightly moved herself noticeably, at least maybe it's fair or unfair, not as far left as Bernie. She's clearly, I mean, she's a capitalist. She'll yep. say it and that kind of stuff. I, I, I wonder, or if at the very least, if she, she gets 200 delegates between now and the convention, does yep. she then make a deal with someone and hope her delegates then follow her endorsement? And put someone over the top. Yeah, I think I think that is a she would want to be one of the brokers everyone's talking about. Everyone thinks there's these brokers who at the convention are magically gonna meet. There there are no people like that. There's super delegates who can vote. There's people like her who can say, I'm support this person. Right. It's up to but them. it's a lot messier than I think most people think. So that is a role she has if she's able to sway a lot of those people. Look, it's also two high risk candidates. I think there's part of her saying what we've been talking about. A, with Biden, you don't know if he's going to have some catastrophic moment politically in the next few months where Democrats all of a sudden are like, oh my God, this is too much of a risk. And similarly with Sanders, uh, you know, I don't know, some position comes out far left of what many Democrats think is acceptable. So there is, of every election we've had, there's a reason you say, I'm just going to wait this one out a little bit. Right. So when you look... Like you cannot have a unity ticket with with Bernie and Biden. They cannot. Even, say no. they get all the way to the convention, they've almost an equal number of delegates. It's impossible, given the demographics of who they are as a ticket. It doesn't. It, it won't work. No. I mean, when's the last time you had you had Reagan with Bush, or they'd run against each other for, yep. for the Republican yep. nomination in an uh, eighty until he puts them on the ticket. Yep. Anyone right else? Away. Anyone else? Was Al Gore competing with Clinton in a way that was? I can't remember in 92, uh, to be honest. I can't remember. I think Gore probably ran then. I'm not yeah. sure and didn't go anywhere. But it wasn't like he was unified. It wasn't as bringing his biggest competitor onto right. the ticket. I mean, Obama, Biden. Biden ran against him. And he Obama. lost in Iowa. He didn't get past yeah. Iowa. So right. I'm just. So it I, happens. I, I'm just wondering. But this is not. I mean, look, you can't do it. When age is a problem like this, to have two then double down. You, you need you need different demographics. You need different age. I, I don't think that would work as a unity. No, 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 She no, would no, work no. as a unity. T- right, exactly. That's she would ins- work. I mean, so, if you had a Biden Warren ticket, uh, I think that could be pretty is, formidable. Here is just pure speculation, folks, which is never good. But if, say, Liz Warren were to endorse Bernie, yeah. and then if Biden got the nomination, and then Biden picked Warren, yeah, that's and if she's unity. been out here for the next three months campaigning for Bernie, where the Bernie supporters go like we really like her Mm -hmm. and you're doing you're you're giving us something not what we wanted but it's close perhaps it works if in the the flip side if she were to endorse biden now there's no you're not bringing any of the bernie people on by then putting her on the ticket i don't think then like the best way to get bernie people on the ticket is no no i agree she supports bernie goes campaign with them 100 percent for the next three months and then if biden and this is pure speculation i'm just you know, this is what politics is about, yeah. isn't This is what cable news is about. Speculate on air. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back with more of our friend Julian Zelizer after this. Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM Progress 127.
You're listening to the Dean Obidala Show on Sirius XM's Progress. And welcome back, Dean Obidala Show. We're here with Julian Zelizer from CNN. So, Julian, right in time for the up the sentence of Joe Biden is Senator Ron Johnson, Republican and big Trump backer, who's the head of uh, one of the committees in the Senate, a ranking member. I can't, I don't, from my notes here, I can't remember if he's actually the head of a committee. But now he, he's stepping up his investigation yep. into Hunter and Joe Biden and wants subpoena power now. Surprise, surprise. And the best part of it, he goes this, he goes, um, Johnson, the Republican senator, insisted it had the timing of the probe had nothing to do with the election calendar, adding, and this is just remarkable, they, they, these are questions that Biden has not answered. I, If I were a Democratic primary voter, voter I'd want these questions answered. You just made it about the campaign, even though we know it's really to help Trump. It's not about the campaign, but I think primary voters... So. So all of a sudden, Ron Johnson's gone back to the idea of he's going to root out corruption beginning with 2016 and the son of the Democratic like potential nominee. This is do you think this still has traction or in a way has impeachment uh, in a way insulated both Trump to the Ukraine call and Biden to this thing? I don't think it's totally insulated, Biden. I think there's a lot more to come as the general election uh, emerges and. Uh, this is the kind of issue that Republican voters love. So uh, if you're looking for um, issues that could excite the Republicans, investigating your opponent, it's great. Trump loves it. Because right, he's always Trump. thinking, how do you frame your opponent? And so this is exactly uh, what he's looking for. Remember, it's like the emails in Hillary Clinton. But, uh, so he, I think that's why it doesn't totally insulate him from the political effects. When you think about it, though, if you want to just and I don't want to get the juvenile yeah. Trump any credit here, but he framed Hillary as crooked Hillary. Yes. The whole time. Joe Biden, his little nickname is Sleepy. Yeah. So of the worst quality of Joe Biden is Sleepy. Now you're trying to make him as criminal Biden. Uh, I think it's harder. I Look, Hillary at one point when she was State Department, Secretary of State was very popular. And her negatives went up pretty quickly, right. though. Biden, his negatives are not there. I don't think you can. You can't make him Hillary. I, I just don't see it in, in a few months. Yeah. If it's not hurt him as much with the, the Hunter Biden thing with his son, there's no illegality. There's definitely no illegality yeah. there. So it just becomes dismisses politics, I think, to independent voters, perhaps. I'm hoping. Could, it, it could be. I mean, I, I see another scenario where uh, it's a way to undercut the ability to uh, for Democrats to sell Biden as this candidate for everyone and a a person of the people kind of Democrat instead put them as the establishment, the corrupt Washington doing all kinds of sordid things and simply to raise an air of doubt about him. I agree. I think it's a little harder post debate, but, but I don't want to say it's totally it's not effective over, no, because we've this. seen him do this before, but all I'm hoping the Democrats take a page from hardball politics that Trump has used very effectively is go right on the offensive yes. and t don't even engage it. Just right. go right. Look what Trump has done. He's profiting off his hotel. His daughter Ivanka Trump. And they don't want to bring up the daughter because they it seems too sleazy to them. Right. But they can just say, look at the complaints filed by Crew, which is nonpartisan ethics violation by Ivanka, gotten trademarks from China and Japan while her father is negotiating with both. Right. You can say it in a way without making it about Ivanka, making it part of this whole swamp world of Donald Trump. His inner circle's in prison. Right. I mean, so instead of even Defending the Hunter Biden, I think go on the offensive just over and over and over the way that any weakness of Trump, their response was not to engage the substance, was to go after Hillary on the on allegations instead. We'll see. Democrats often are reluctant to do I know. That, so. What is I've had House Oversight members on. I've had so they many. It's like, like a it. running joke yeah. with Matt. I'm like, I'm going to get this one to commit to investigate Ivanka Trump. Even once I know they yeah. won't do it. Right. They go, well, we'll really focus on the father. Right. She's in the administration right. and there are ethics violations filed by crew, a nonpartisan ethics group. You can use those as a roadmap, but they, they would make, they know that and maybe it's a daughter. It sounds worse. Perhaps. I mean, I have to be honest. If you look at it that way, perhaps, 
They're already overthinking it. I mean, look, there's a lot of both parties are partisan in Washington, but they're different kinds of partisanship. That's what we call asymmetrical partisanship. <laughs> One party goes in a very different direction. And the Republicans are willing for many decades now to do scorched earth, destroy everyone kind of politics. Many Democrats, even liberals, are reluctant to do that. And it's going to really play out this fall because you're going to see what are the costs of that? And, and are Democrats still in that place? I think it's interesting you mentioned the asymmetrical yep. and how we don't do things unexpected. When Nancy Pelosi held up the articles of impeachment, it seems like a lifetime ago, yeah. that stunned them because that's something they would have done. Right. And they did not expect a Democrat to do. That's a Mitch McConnell move in a second, a Mitch McConnell type of thing. Merrick Garland, you know, it was a type of move like that. So they were like, what? I think that's when Democrats, so many called then like, wow. This yeah. is really great. She's playing right. hardball, and it helped paint the picture of why you need witnesses, and 75% of Americans supported witnesses by the end. That's only because she held up the articles of impeachment. Because we just went over, like, you don't need witnesses. Uh, but what about the political... Look, in the world of politics, even a crisis becomes political. It can help you or hurt you if you're an elected sure. official. There's no doubt about it. And you've got Trump. This is just priceless. Nina... We're going to play some clips. This is Trump today with all the people around him and uh, the doctors and everything. Uh, just, I'll just play it. clip number seven. It speaks for itself. And I haven't touched my face in weeks. <laughs> in weeks. I miss it. They were talking about keeping your hands clean. Now, he was intentionally joking, but, right. you know, to me, the more serious things are you had Trump. I think this has to be played in some ad. February 10th, folks, this is not six months ago, while it was ravaging parts of China, asked about what you're going to do about preparing for this virus. Very short clip. I think they should be in every ad. Nina, play clip number 10. Uh, the virus that we're talking about having to do, you know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat, as the heat comes in. Uh, typically, that will go away in April. We're in great shape, though. We're that one's, I think that's a really damning clip. That was February, right. that's in like six months ago. That's February 10th. Right. It's like heck of a job, Brownie. That, this is, um, this is right up there. This yeah, is that's really bad. Reference to Katrina right, and exactly. how much it hurt Bush that he wasn't prepared and didn't handle it well. This is the same, but on steroids. Uh, both the lack of preparation, the funding cuts before this that are now playing out, and then the mishandling of every step of this from what he says to the way he says it to the lack of proper people. I think this could really matter, and it's totally fair game. This is what we want presidents to handle, right. these kinds of crises. And you want to know, we'll play this clip, clip and then we'll go to break on the uh, after, though. This is how you can tell Donald Trump is really concerned about what's going on today. Wait for it, folks. He blamed President Obama. I'm not kidding. Here is clip. This is real. This is from today. Here's clip number eight. I just want to add, if I might, uh, and to go a little bit further, the Obama administration made a decision on testing that turned out to be very detrimental to what we're doing. And we undid that decision a few days ago so that the testing can take place in a much more accurate and rapid fashion. Uh, that was uh, a decision we disagreed with. I don't think we would have made it, but for some reason it was made. But we've undone that decision. Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM Progress 127.
This is the Dino Bidala Show, exclusively on Sirius XM's Progress. And welcome back to the Inobi Dollar Show. Julian Zellers is still here. And look who it is. It's Super Tuesday's John Fugelsang. Why, thank you. Yes, Super <laughs> Tuesday's Dino Badala. What a great thrill to see you. So, my friend, what were you surprised as we were as the results were coming in? As to- uh, I, I am so shocked that we are exactly where we were a year ago before all of this started. We have arrived back to it's going to be Bernie versus Biden. It took one year and 18 other people, and here we are. Hell but on money. our show, special live auction, I have 25,000 Bloomberg 2020 hats <laughs> that we are auctioning off to the very first bidder, uh, along with my stock in the Jewel Vape Pen Company. That's very, and who's on your show tonight? Before uh, Bob, the great Bob Seska will be joining us tonight. Good. The great Marilou Henner joins wow, us tonight. Cool. Uh, and it is a flirt fest. She's very inappropriate and minxy. Nice. And you don't want to miss it. Good God, she's the most gorgeous woman in the world. And then your own Nina Karufa joins Keith Price for what? our ADD panel that, later on. Great. She's still I'm talking jealous. to me. All right, thanks, John. Julian, thank you, my thanks friend. And you're on me. Twitter at Julian Zelizer. You got it. I'm, of course, at Dino Bidala, Facebook.com slash Dean of Radio, Dean at Dean of Radio.com. Don't go anywhere. John Fugel saying right after this.